Good morning, good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Come on, this is a lively church group here today. I love it. I love it. It's a great time to be excited because today we're talking about the joy of the Lord. Who's got a little joy in your life today? I am excited for today. We have been uh, doing a series all month called Christmas Presents, and it's really about the presence of Jesus in our life and what that brings to us the first week. We talked about peace. It's all based on a passage in Luke, Luke 2.10, where the angel appears to the shepherds in the fields to let them know that the Messiah has been born, and the angels say, do not be afraid. That is peace. I bring you good news, and that is hope. Last week we talked about hope. You know, peace is not to be found in this world. Our hope is not in the things of this world. All of these things are actually in the person of Jesus Christ. And so peace isn't found on earth. Peace came to earth, and our hope is in him. And then uh, the angel said, "Uh, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. And so we're, today we're talking about the joy of the Lord. And I want to introduce you to what I'm calling the childbirth principle. Can I get a witness? Today's message really is for anyone who maybe uh, you enter into seasons at times where joy is hard to come by. Anybody ever get to that place? All right, that should be all of us. I want to talk about the childbirth principle in Scripture that is affecting all of you today, and I hope it will shine a little light on your pursuit of joy. I remember well, we, I, we gave birth a bunch of times. I lost count. It was around five. Uh, I remember, uh, man, how many of you have experienced uh, childbirth, like up close and personal? Changes you, don't it? I remember the first one, like underneath, I'm scared to death, but uh, trying to think, I'm going to go in here. I bet some men just act stupid. I'm going to roll up in here, and I'm going to be cool, calm, and collected. I'm going to show them what it's like. It t- that lasts about 2.8 seconds. And I just like immediately, I just enter into a world I don't know what to say or do. I'm just like, okay, push, push. They're like, sir, we're just getting her checked in. Just (laughs) back off a little bit. I immediately knew I'm not prepared for this. I'm an idiot. I just, I slowly backed away from what was happening here. Nurse, the, the nurse. Kind, she saw my total uh, out of it fear. She nurse stepped over and said, why, why don't you just stand over there for a little bit? She kind of took my place. And my, our first one, I ended up on the floor because I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know anything. And it, it'll change you. Uh, but then, men, if, if you hadn't experienced that yet, if you might experience it one day, just, just look. It's, it's just don't try to say anything. Don't try to come. Just be there or not be there, whatever she wants. Like, the best thing you might can do is just get out of the way. Just stand in the corner, do this, come on. I decided I would look. Whoo, that will change your life right there. But the childbirth principle is, is, is actually a part of life from the beginning. It's... We are walking in a curse, and this is not just women. We are walking in a curse of the childbirth principle because when Adam and Eve sinned, God says there's consequences to this, and this is what he said to Eve. He said, from this point forward, I am going to make childbirth, put that, yeah, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. That's a little understatement. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Now, just imagine this just before that, in the garden, in Eden, when everything was right. If you were hungry, God just spoke it into being. If you needed food, 
If you needed shelter, if you were creating life, God just, the Bible says God just laid Adam down to rest and in his sleep came forth Eve. Like, now it's like, no, it's going to hurt. There is a consequence to sin. It is a curse that we are still walking in to this day. Doesn't just affect women. Look at what he said to Adam. He said, cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat food from it all the days of your life. And to this day, to get to that place of joy, to get to that place of life, it means you're going to walk through some stuff. And here's my principle for you today. Take home with you temporary pain versus eternal joy. And so wherever you're at, if you're in a season of pain, this is what I want you to take home. You just remind yourself that my pain is temporary. My joy will be eternal. Whatever you are walking through, we're walking in the curse of this world where all the days of our life, we're going to have to walk through trials, walk through pain, but you just remind yourself, my pain is temporary, my joy is going to be eternal. This is the principle that the, it's, you see it in Scripture beginning to end. It's affecting all of our lives. Just think of in James uh, chapter 1, it says, Perseverance must finish its work for you to be mature and complete. you got to walk through some pain, the refiner's fire, to get to a place of maturity. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus says, here's the people I'm looking for, not the ones who will put their hand to the plow and then turn back and say, this is too hard. No, Jesus is looking for people who's going to put their hand to the plow, and no matter how difficult the ground is, you're going to keep plowing. And if you're in a place today where your pain is gripping your heart and life is hard, Jesus says, keep plowing, keep plowing, keep plowing, because your pain is temporary, but your joy is going to be eternal. Jesus himself had to walk through torture and death and crucifixion in order to undo the curse to produce life. Galatians 6 says, let us not grow weary in doing good, because in due time we will reap a harvest if we don't grow weary. you got to walk through some sowing time, some, some plowing time. Jesus said it's like a farmer in a field just working the ground. It's like childbirth. It's even... Even the age we live in with all the wars and famine. I was watching Aleppo this week saying, God, have mercy on these children, on these families. We live in a horrible time. And yet, Jesus says, it's just like, it's just like childbirth. Matthew 24, nation's going to rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, earthquakes. But all these, these are just like birth pains. Like we're going to walk through some hard times, but that pain will be temporary. Your joy will be eternal. Romans 8 said, we can't even compare the sufferings of this age to the glory that's going to be revealed in us. Your pain is temporary. Your joy will be eternal. Just remind yourself and the devil as you walk through those hard times. Because it's going to take perseverance. It's going to take focus. It's going to take determination. It's going to take walking by faith and not by sight. Because times are going to get tough. And joy is going to be hard to come by. Pain is all you will see. And you just got to by faith say, my pain is temporary. My joy will be eternal. So... How do we get to that place of joy? How do we get joy in our life? Because it's going to take strength. It's going to take work. All the days of our life, we're going to toil to get to that place of food. Childbirth's only going to come through pain. So how do we get to that? Well, 
I'm just going to tell you, I want to share a passage with you that has changed my relationship with the Lord recently, maybe more than any other in a long time. And there is a passage out of Nehemiah. You've probably heard the last part of it. It says, the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Now, let me confess to you. I've heard this verse many, many times over my life. I've quoted it. I've claimed it, proclaimed it, stood on it. But there are times where I'm like, God, I just don't feel it. And honestly, can I confess to you, it's those times where I think, well, my faith must be broken. My faith must be broken today because, God, your word says that the joy of the Lord is going to be my strength, and I don't feel strong, and I don't feel joy. So what's happened to me? What's wrong with me? And then in preparation for this message, God just shined a whole new light on this passage, and it is just firing me up to the core. Because it doesn't say, your joy going to be your strength. The Lord's joy is going to be your strength. You don't have to be happy in this moment. You don't have to feel joy in this moment. You just got to know your daddy has joy. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. You ever walked into, when you were a kid, you ever walked in happy and then realized mom or daddy was mad? You ain't happy no more. You walk home from school feeling good. You walk in, get in here, boy. You have worked for a boss that's just mean every single day, and you just, it's just, it's just, you hate going to work. But on the other side of that, you ever known somebody that was just so full of joy, you, you couldn't help but be happy around them? Like you just, you just, you want to, when times are tough, that's who you want to be close to. Because they just have a way about them where they just speak words of life and hope and encouragement. And they just lift you up. You are the wind. That's, that's what I'm talking about. See, when mama's happy, when daddy's happy, everybody's happy. And so you don't have to be walking in a good season. You don't have to be happy, but here's what you got to do. You got to know that the Lord is happy, that the Lord, the, the Bible says the fruit of God's spirit is joy. In other words, if I had an apple up here, if I got an apple, if I had an apple up here and I bit into it, it ain't going to taste like a banana. It ain't going to taste like an orange. You can count on it. You bite into an apple, you're going to taste apple. Well, you can count on it. You get close to the Lord, there's going to be joy. Like that is, it, it, you don't ever have to wonder, Connor, are you, are you just so disappointed in me today and just mad? Have I just gone too far? No. God's already promised, I have joy for you, not because of you, but because of my son, Jesus. And so when I look at you, the fruit of my spirit is love and joy. And so you need, in those dark times, to cling not to your own joy, but to the joy of the Lord. And know that your daddy is well pleased with you. 
This is where that passage comes from. It's out of the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah is the story where they have rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. And now all the people have gathered together. And Ezra stands up and begins to proclaim the word of the Lord. And they begin to pray and worship. But then conviction falls on everyone. And they just begin to fall on their face and mourn and weep. Because they realize in light of the truth of God, the holiness of God, they just realize how despicable and wretched and ugly and dirty they are. And they just become so convicted and they just wail and mourn. Oh God, we are ruined people. We are ruined people. I've fallen so short. And Nehemiah says, no, 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 get up. Go and enjoy Choice food and sweet drinks, and even look around. If you got somebody in need, bless them also to have nothing prepared. This day is holy to the Lord. Don't grieve, for the joy of the Lord is going to be your strength. He is happy today with you. Like, you need to understand in 1 Timothy 1, it explains this is the role of the laws of God. When the, in 1 Timothy 1, it just goes and begins to name different sins of lying and adultery and uh, uh, just homosexuality. All these things that we uh, get wrapped up in. We, we're all covered by the categories. And, and, and when we read this, we should just say, oh God, that's me. That's me. But then it says, you need to understand that the purpose of the law is to expose your need for a Savior and then to push you into the loving arms of a happy Father. It actually says, for the glory of our blessed Father, that word blessed there is also translated happy. Like, yeah, we have the law to show us how far we fall. Don't stay there. Don't get trapped there. There's condemnation there. There's, there's just feelings of failure there. No, the law causes you to run into the arms of your Father God who says, but I'm going to rescue you from that. I'm happy with you. I'm pleased with you. I'm going to save you from those sins. And now they'll never hurt you again. And so now the joy of the Lord, when we feel like a failure, when we feel exposed, when we walk through dark times, you may not feel it, but the joy of the Lord can be your strength. And I just got to ask you today, is there anyone here who needs the joy of the Lord in your life? Anyone here who's just, oh, you just, you're not walking in it. You're far from it. You need to come back to the joy. You're looking for it in yourself or this world and you hadn't found it. Can I just pray for you now? Let me just pray for you. Father God, would you send your Holy Spirit now with the gift of joy? God, I ask your Holy Spirit to flow through this room. And, and I already know with it comes love and joy and peace. Father, would you send your Holy Spirit through our hearts now? She says, come Holy Spirit. Speak words of life and hope and peace. This is for anybody. I want to pray for you just with our eyes closed. Can you just say, I really could, could use some more joy from the Lord today. Can I just pray? Will you just lift, lift your hand so I can just pray for you now? Awesome. A lot of hands today. I just want to pray for joy. I just want you to be encouraged. Joy isn't something you have to manufacture yourself. Because honestly, your times right now may be very painful. Jesus says you're going to walk through trouble, but take heart because I've overcome this world. So you don't have to find joy in this world. You don't have to find peace in this world. Joy is going to come from me, and my joy is going to be your strength. Holy Spirit, I pray now you speak to these hearts. Just speak words of life and joy, hope. God, let them know that you're close to them in their situation, that they can cling to you with all their hearts. God, I pray 
that we would lift our eyes unto the hills from which cometh our help, God. That when we walk out of here, our eyes would be lifted to you. That we would cling to you for our joy. And before I say amen, can I just ask, is there anyone here today who you may be a guest first time or you just may, you, you may be coming for, but you don't even know if the Lord is a part of your life. You don't even, you don't even know if you've surrendered your life to him. I want to pray for you. I want to introduce you to Jesus, the maker of heaven, earth, your creator, and the author of all your joy, the source of your joy. I want to introduce you to him right now. Is there anyone right now who would say, I need Jesus in my life? Would you lift your hand just high enough for me to see it right now? Because I want to pray for you. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Let's pray this together, y'all. Let's just start fresh with God and say, uh, God, I need you. I need you to take over my life. Y'all ready? Let's just pray this together. Say, dear Jesus, I need you. Would you take over? My heart is ugly and broken. Would you replace it with your heart, your mind, and fill me with your spirit? Would you give me the fruit of your presence? Thank you, God, for a second chance today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Woo! Come on, everybody. Let's say thank you to God one time today. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I'm just, I can't tell you how much this has affected me as I walk through stuff that I don't like that are difficult, that are painful. And I just like, you know what? It's not my joy I need to lean on. The joy of the Lord's going to be my strength. I'm miserable right now. But God, I'm clinging to your joy because my daddy's happy and pleased with me. So I just pray as you leave here, you walk under the umbrella of the Lord's joy, of the Lord's happiness. And in fact, before, before we close our service, I just want to practice a little bit of the joy of the Lord. Here's how you can get closer to that joy is you just walk in the things that are pleasing to the Lord. Like you just partner with God. And just like in Nehemiah, it says the Lord convicts you, but get up now. Let's go be a blessing to others, and the joy of the Lord is going to be your strength. And so once a year, we just pick a service And we just like to bless people. And the people we wanted to bless today are people who have been walking with this mentality, this mindset of times are tough, but they're not letting trials slow them down. They're going to put their hand to the plow. They're going to keep marching even when life gets tough. And I want to remind them today, your pain is temporary. Your joy will be eternal. So, a couple quick blessings. I just noticed this morning. I just had a couple extra. Here's the deal, y'all. We, we, uh, we budget a little bit for this, but really, some people have stepped forward and said, I love what y'all do. We want to help with this. We did a noisy offering a couple weeks ago, and so you guys made these possible, and then other people stepped forward and made them possible as well. So, a few minutes ago... I just got handed a couple Boston butts, said, give them away to somebody today. Anybody like Boston butts in the house today? You like them? You like them? I just saw the Tucker family right here. Jessica, kid, you guys are about to get mad. I want to bless you today with a Boston butt. Congratulations, everybody. Give it up for the Tucker. Spencer, I'm proud. I just, y'all are a faithful family, and I so appreciate you guys. So, before you leave here, drop by the information desk. They're going to give you a card showing you how to get it. Also, uh, I got to uh, uh, talk with someone who's been fairly new to us, uh, just started coming recently. And uh, Terry, I was just talking to you. Where you at, Terry? Raise your, Terry, right back there. Terry's going to be around here for the holidays. I want to bless you with a Boston butt today, Terry. 
drop by the information desk. Before you leave, they'll show you how to get it. I got a few more. I want. I, I, I love these. These are one of. This is one of the funnest things we do. Don't need your help, Siri. All right, here we go. This is a family I got to spend some time with yesterday. Fred and Ethel, where you at? Fred, Ethel, Ethel down here. Fred, oh, there you are. Oh, you're coming back to church now. Okay. Hi. Hi. You said I'm done with it. No, I'll come back. I'll... <laughs> we, I spent time in their small group yesterday with Sharon, and I just want to tell you, powerful, powerful, powerful. They do a small group on your identity in Christ that I just say everybody plan on doing it sometime. What's the name of the book? Your Destiny, His Glory. I think we may do it next semester too. It was awesome. Thank you for that. This is a family who for years has given their whole life away to this body. And I love y'all. appreciate y'all. Ethel, you lost, I believe you lost a couple brothers this year, didn't you? I know you've been in mourning this year. And we just wanted to say we love you. And so for you, we've got, let's see here, a special night. We thought it'd be fun to do dinner in the movies. So you've got $50 food certificate and $25 movie certificate. So just to say thank you. We love you. Bless you. Maybe even let Sharon come along with you. I don't know. <laughs> Also, the next family I just wanted to bless. Where's the Crosby family? Ron Crosby, where are you at? Where are you at? Right back there. Where's Ron? Ron and Janine, y'all stand up for just a second. I know you don't like Jenny. Jenny Crosby, I, well, I just called you Janine. Huh? Ron and Jenny, there's your kiddos coming to join you. Let me just say, if you don't know this family, one of the most precious families you'll ever meet. Uh, you guys are awesome. Had, had some of your kids in my small group this time. They're awesome. You guys are doing an amazing job. Um, and Ron, I just, I've said to you many times, when I walk up and see Ron outside just worshiping, uh, it just is driving away the demons, y'all. It is just preparing the way of the Lord as we come to worship. Ron had a heart attack this year and was back at the door a couple days later. I was like, what are you doing here? You're killing me. I ain't got no workers comp around here, brother. Well, come on. But Ron, you're just a blessing to us. I appreciate you. In fact, let me say this. I pulled up this morning and the rain was coming down and I saw Ron with all his family park as far away as he possibly could to make sure other people could get better spots in the rain. That is a servant's heart, man, and I just so appreciate that. So, Ron, we want to bless you with a $200 Walmart gift card, everybody. I got to grab it. Send one of your boys up here. I'm going to hand it to him. You take it home with you. Come on, Dexter. Y'all, I hope this makes your Christmas a, just a little bit more fun. Don't you spend that before you get back to your seat now, Dexter. Uh, that I, I actually, hey, Dexter, come back here, buddy. I gave you the wrong one, my man. I'm sorry. Sorry, we'll have to have that back if you don't mind. <laughs> that was meant for another family. He I'm didn't mean sorry, to give Dex. that. He said, the, oh, they have one good. Okay. <laughs> Fred, Fred and Ethel, I never Ethel. gave you. I was this just yours, excited Fred to talk about it. <laughs> Y'all and right up here, forgive we me. actually had to do this surprise a little early. Angelie Alderman, could you stand up for us, girl? Could you stand up for Angelie, I just want you to know this is a precious girl who's been with us for years, and she has battled her health for so long, and uh, it is a pain. So this girl is, she's just one of those, she's fighting through life, working multiple jobs as a single woman, and she don't let it. So I, I saw in Publix one of her jobs the other day. She was so full of joy, saying, you know, i just been praying, and the Lord's Spirit is sustaining me. I even worked bonus hours this week. So, Angelie, she actually has to go to the Mayo Clinic. Uh, let me, let me, I'm about to, I don't want, I'll, I'll get to you. I'll get to you. Oh, my goodness. I love you, girl. I love you, girl. Bless you. Woo. Make sure I gave you the right gift. I'm confused now. Hey, climb back up. I want to see you climb up. Come on. Oh, you're going to walk? Okay. All right. 
Angeli goes to the Mayo Clinic tomorrow for several days of treatment, and so we're covering all her host tail stays there, Woo! so she can just have, enjoy yourself. Don't think about, don't think about money stuff. All right, next we got. I need help with this one. Emily, can you help me with this one real quick? You mind running up here? I got a microphone. Run, Emily, you. run. Come on, run. <laughs> Just jump up. Just jump up real quick. All right. Just one step. How many people uh, are here today that serve the storehouse ministry? How many storehouse people we got here today? Awesome, awesome. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you. If you got my year in review, I do a, week, an, a weekly email almost every week. So if you don't get that, you can on the connection card. Make sure we have your current email address. But this week, I just did a year in review for 2016. The storehouse just in their sales raised an additional over $75,000 this year for missions. And this is a family. This is a family. If you're looking to plug into a ministry or a group, that's an awesome one to consider. They work over there all week long, doing amazing ministry. And so uh, with the special help from some families in our, a family in our community and a bit, Emily, I'm going to let you share the, the, the news to them. Get on up and let them know. All right. This is so exciting to be able to share. And it's just such a, a blessing to us. And it shows us God's hand of blessing is on what we're doing here at Heritage in our community and globally. And so the Cox family has given to the Storehouse family and Heritage this truck to help Check us with our... Um, A box truck. Woo! Come on. We do, we do lots of... Um, deliveries and pickups and our guys a lot of our guys are retired and um so this is going to help them it's got a lift that actually lifts it up into the truck so we're just up so to this grateful. point bobby's been the lift so bobby that's right you don't have to be the lift anymore bobby just got replaced with a lift hey man and, and miss mildred here on the front row too aren't you glad you don't have to lift things up into that truck anymore <laughs> <laughs> yeah Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Storehouse team, for all you. Thank you, Cox Truck and Van. Thank you for all you do. Got a couple more here. Uh, back in the back, one of my favorite men, Richard Henry. You see him at way to holler out to us, Richard. I think we got a picture of, Ri of Richard up there. We got a picture of, there's Richard there. Richard, I just want to say, man, we met Richard through a mega impact years ago, and he's become been a part of our family ever since. He's one of my personal mentors that I go to for advice and counsel. This is a man full of wisdom. Thank you for all you do, Richard. He has been faithfully serving in Breathe Ministry, and they, they uh, have been in need of a wheelchair-accessible van. And so Richard has been offering his own van for transportation to get those in wheelchairs to breathe ministry each week and all the wear and tear it just it broke it, it I think the the brakes and and the lift and all kind of different things and so we kind of got your van this week Richard and I just want you to know with thanks from Bill and Kathy Warner and and his shop there is all being done and and taken care of Richard no payment what's is paid in full Richard your van's gonna be running nice and good so thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. That's you there. Okay. I was about to say, I don't know. I don't, I'm running out. Joyce, you mind getting that back to Richard for me? Thank you so much. I got a, I got another one here. And I do want to say thank you to, to Bill, uh, Bill Warner, for the last couple years that we've been doing this. When we make auto repairs, he goes behind the scenes and he makes it happen and gets it done and covers costs and maintenance and all that. And so uh, I just wanted to say, Bill and Kathy, you need a little night off yourself. I know you, you're a romantic kind of man. So Bill and Kathy, we're giving you a $100 gift card to get your own hotel room, a gas card, and a food card to have a romantic. Come on and get it, Bill and Ken. Thank them, everybody. You guys are awesome. Woo! Wow, Bill, we love you, man. 
It's time for Honeymoon Part 2. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know who's smiling more, but it's going to be fun. All right. <laughs> well, that, that just about does it for our blessings, except that just leaves one little thing. Richard, we don't want your van getting wore out anymore, and Cox Truck and Van didn't either. So Breathe Ministry, guess what you got? Check this photo out. You got a brand new bus for Breathe Ministry with a wheelchair. She fall out, Eric, is she alive? They having some church back she there. She did back there. <laughs> Thank you for all you do, Breathe Ministry. I know this has been a dream of yours for a long time. Cox Truck and Van saw you out there trying to get Richard's van to work the other day and said, we got to do something about this. So thank you, Cox Truck and Van. They went out, they got a bus, put a brand new tires and a brand new motor in it. It's going to last you a long time. Thank you. They're getting your label put on it all the This is so fun. I want to keep it. Everybody gets a car. No, no, I just get carried. <laughs> just getting carried away. No, I just, I hope this, this Christmas season that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. That when you walk through the tough stuff, you just cling to your daddy with all you got. And just remind yourself. This pain is temporary. Psalm 30 says, sorrow may last through the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Just remind yourself, your pain is temporary. Your joy will be eternal. And I wanted to share a story with you from a family that has turning their sorrow into joy. Um, I just want to honor Jonathan and Heather Edwards. I just asked their permission because I just was like, wow. They lost their son this year, little man, Jonathan Jr. And uh, as they were heading into the holidays, they said, it, we just, we have this Christmas money set aside that we would normally spend on our little man. And instead, they sought out a family. They said, from now on, we want to take little man's Christmas money and bless another family. And so they are turning their sorrow into joy and the Lord is using them and little man's legacy to bless people in a powerful way so thank you Jonathan and Heather we love y'all I hope I hope this Christmas as you start counting your blessings the joy of the Lord would be your strength and you realize he is with you he smiles on you he has favor towards you his joy is with you. And even as you walk through sorrow, well, may we be a light to this world and a joy to others. Thank you, church, so much. We're going to end our service by receiving our offerings. So I'm going to ask our ushers to get in, in position. And, and uh, I just thank you for your generosity. I will say as a church, we're just a little behind budget for 2016. But you've been so generous. So I just, all I say is, as you think about end of year giving, we are praying that we just finish strong uh, because it, it, it affects the way we plan for next year. And so I just, would, I thank you for any extra generosity toward us this year so we can just, we're, we're dreaming of just nothing but growth. Uh, but we always are, it's important to us to be great stewards. So we don't put ourselves ahead of where the finances are. We practice what we teach you to do in your personal life. Don't spend more than you make. And so we do that as well. So as we end our year financially, it really sets us up for the next. So I just appreciate any end of year giving and any generosity and sacrifice you make. And I just pray the Lord's blessing on you. So let me pray for our offering. Now before I do, if you have the connection card in your worship guide, please let us know. If you're making any type of decision today for Jesus, just check that box, update your personal information, and you can include that in the offering basket as we receive them today. We want to celebrate with you and give you some next steps. So pray with me, church. Father God, I just am praying. 
for it being that we, we would not only meet our budget, that we would uh, exceed our budget, God. I just pray uh, that you would bless our people. And out of the overflow of their blessings, you just bless our church to grow in ministry and impact, God. So thank you. Thank you for the generosity, God. We give now cheerfully, sacrificially, uh, and with a thankful heart as a part of our worship time. So bless this offering, God, and multiply it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. All right, ushers, they're going to receive our offering. Want to let you know, this is big. Want to remind you of next weekend's plans. It's Christmas weekend, and this is one of, this is, it only happens every several years when Christmas day falls on a Sunday. Now, we, we agonized over what to do about this, but studies show that Christmas and Easter are the two best opportunities to invite someone to church who's not currently going to church. But studies also show if they have to choose between church or family gatherings or supper, they're going to choose family. And so we said, you know what, let's give our community the best opportunity possible to come be with us for church. So we are moving church from Sunday morning to Saturday morning on Christmas Eve, this coming Saturday, same time slot as Sunday, 9 o'clock first service, uh, 1045, 1045 second 45, service. 1045, that's right. 9 and 1045. Now, let me just ask you personally, I get excited the week leading up to Easter and Christmas, and I just tell you, I... I, am, I will invite every single person I come across this week because I, know, I met somebody in the gym last night. I don't, he, he might even be here today. I don't know. I met somebody in the gym and said, would you please join me? He said he was coming today. He might be coming here or second service. But all week long, I'm like, hey, I would love for you to be with us at church. Your, your chance of a yes goes way up this week. So I just I, I send you on a mission now all week long. Let's bring in our sons and daughters who need to encounter Jesus next weekend. It's going to be on the love of God as we finish Christmas prayer. We've got some special stuff planned. And then on Sunday, we're going to give you a link to go online and watch a devotional that uh, we made with our kids, actually. Uh, and and we'll, they will lead us through the Christmas story. But, uh, but thank you so much, church. As I dismiss you. I was asked to announce that we did lose a very precious member of our family last night. Uh, if you know uh, the DeMott family, Scott and Lisa and Terry and Teresa and Stuart and Shannon, and uh, uh, they, they lost their daddy in the night last night, Mr. Bo DeMott, who they always sit back there. I speak to him every week. Precious, precious family. And so they wanted me to let you know because Terry has to have, I believe, surgery on Tuesday. And so they are, are having to go ahead and do the funeral tomorrow. And so if you want to love on this family, uh, the visitation is going to be right here from 1230 to 130. And the funeral will be here at 2 tomorrow. So pray for this family. Think of ways to encourage them and love on them as they enter into the holidays with some pain in their hearts. So God bless you, church. Lord, we love you. We give you this day and we give you our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Heritage.